Welcome everyone. Um, there's no one in the chat yet, but hopefully they will be soon. I thought at first we could talk about um, the what happened with the next two videos. Is I'm going to be doing one video on color mixing, and um, we'll be showing you how to mix different colors uh, with just the standard colors, like uh, say uh, you run out of sap green, we're going to show you how to make it with what colors you have left. Uh, brown, uh, alizarin crimson, other other different colors, how to make black if you don't have black. So we'll be showing you how to do that. And the second one is for mostly for portrait painters. We're going to definitely be doing some on flesh tones. I mean, there's really no such thing as a per se flesh tone because it's I mean, they make a flesh tone out there, but believe me, it's not even close to a real flesh tone. Flesh tones are really all the same colors. Um, all the same colors you're using now, as far as like you can have red and blue in there and uh, crimson. You're gonna have uh, some white, black, or not black. I use, I use Payne's gray normally. But um, there's a lot of different colors in skin tones, even green. You can even use green, yellow okra, burnt umber, burnt sienna. There's a lot of different ways to make the different flesh tones. And then, uh, of course, it depends on the nationality of the person, too, and, uh, or the race. So we're going we're gonna to work on doing those different flesh tones. And so that'll be an exciting video. And even if you don't do portraits, it's a good thing to learn because eventually you may be doing a landscape and you want to put someone in the landscape. Even if they're at a distance, you're still going to want to use a little bit of flesh tone of some sort, you know, with a little bit of detail anyway. So anyway, I'll leave off at that and uh, just, just, uh, just a little advance notice on what we're going to be doing and then we'll probably be doing another painting tour well, haven't decided yet what we're going to do on that if anyone has any uh, ideas on what they'd like to see I, like i always say leave a comment and uh, i definitely read all the comments so i do take suggestions so if you want to suggest something that you want me to paint, then we'll take a look at it. So anyway, we'll just sit here AFK here for a while. Not AFK, but we'll be back and forth. I'll probably grab something to drink, a cup of coffee or whatever while I'm waiting. And see if anybody shows up. If they don't, then um, we'll continue on possibly tomorrow night. Please make sure you do subscribe if you if you haven't subscribed yet. Subscribe. And another thing is, if you're not getting the notices, if you don't get the notice all the time, click that bell and click all. I did send out a notice earlier through the community page that I have, kind of forewarning people for a few hours beforehand, and then I put this one up maybe uh, 15, 20 minutes before the actual stream started. I think like someone's trying to log in there, but they haven't done it yet. But let's you know, see if we see who's coming in. Unfortunately, YouTube doesn't really show who's trying to come in. It'd be nice if they did. That'd be a good perk. Or someone that's actually on your page, on your channel. I'd love to be able to have something that actually showed who was there and what they were watching. It'd be a great thing to know what they're watching and get an idea of what types of videos that they want to see. So if YouTube, if you're watching, there's an idea for you. I did install a little bit of a, a Streamlabs chat bot. He doesn't do very much, but I do. I'm still learning how to use it. But I can put some 
things out like I did there, the hello and everything automatically by just clicking a button. Things that people ask a lot, man, you know, if, or if someone's cussing or whatever, I can click a button and ask them to tone it down. Uh, went from my email and the Patreon link and my website link and things like that. And I don't have to worry about typing it all out. It just pops them in there automatically. Hopefully we'll figure out the rest of it. We'll see. It does polls also and um, other things. Uh, you can even have music. I haven't figured that one out yet, but it might be nice to have something. I'm not sure. Giveaways. It does giveaways. It has timers. Um, counter. But some This was really geared a lot toward gaming, so it makes it a little bit difficult. As events, mod tools. I've got to download the documentation for it so I can figure it out. Notifications. Let's see if we get stuff to work with Super Chat, which I don't have yet until I get monetized to thank people for Super Chat. All kinds of goodies. I'll probably never figure them all out anyway. Well, it shows two people here. I only see me so far. I guess somebody will talk if there's not. Still only showing one. Oh, hi, Minnie. How are you? <laughs> I'm surprised you're the first one. I know Brad's supposed to be coming, but he's watching, what is that, an archery show, an archery or something? Uh, he said it was coming after he finished watching whatever show he watches every night. So I'm sure he'll be here shortly. And uh, I would imagine, I don't know who else, Brock maybe. Uh, I did speak to Matt, not personally, but I did message him, and I've been waiting for him to show up still, but I guess he's still having problems with his mother. Oh, yeah. What are you doing in your classroom? What are you doing for a craft? Boy, I didn't think my whiskers showed up so much until I saw them in the camera. <laughs> I've been doing all kinds of things today. I didn't have a chance to even shave this morning. Before I do, did live stream, I didn't really worry about it too much. I'm one of them guys that I'm not real crazy about shaving every day, so I don't. But Maybe I just grow a beard. That just made me look older, I guess. So I guess you heard me talking about uh, the bot that I put in, the Streamlab bot. Oh, cool. 
Are you uh, painting the birthday cards? Any graphics on them or using uh, pencil or how are you doing them? I've done some cards for people, but I didn't paint them. I just used graphics. But like I've done some wedding cards for my daughters for their wedding, the wedding invitations. I did those. And the thank you cards and the invitations and whatever. I must have a lot of lag, or you're slow at replying to me. I don't know which one it is. I'm afraid it's the lag still. Thing AT and T has not been nice to me lately. I'm gonna grab a cold drink real quick, Minnie. I'll probably be back before you talk. back. Oh, cool. It's always fun to make the cards and stuff. You can customize them however you want. They're definitely more, more personable. Uh, than just buying a card. You know, everyone's used to buying them. I am too, but um, I always think that they would mean a lot more to people if you just do one yourself. Yeah, it's a quite a long leg by the looks. I might have to go turn my phone off because sometimes that seems to eat it up a little bit. All right, I think I'll do that. I'm going to turn my phone off real quick. What else gets here? Okay, I'm back. Hopefully that'll help. It usually does. Unless my wife's on her end. That takes up some bandwidth too. DSL is not really good at having a lot of bandwidth. And I got the highest package you can get, the fastest one. I've been wanting to use um, StreamYard for a live stream because it's got a lot more options to it. And I can actually do double screens and three or four different 
scenes on one screen for everybody. Um, but I haven't dared to yet because it's done via the web, but it's supposed to be better. And also it has a lot of other good features to it too. But um, I, I'm going to be anxious to try it at some point because you can actually use multiple cameras and all kinds of stuff. I can even show a video and discuss a video, like a, like a painting video, if I wanted to, and point to different things and talk about the video and, and stuff like that, too. So I think that would be a, a benefit to get more people that are we're talking about painting. Of course, lately, we just had this, like, the vlog chat and talk about whatever. Which we've been going for over 15 minutes now. I don't know if anybody's coming or not. Might be the only we might be the only ones. <laughs> been two or three times, just me and uh, 58 C Brock. Mm, excuse me. Maybe she didn't get the notice today, although I did tell everybody yesterday that I was definitely doing this chat today, too. But anyway, as, like I was saying, the stream yard one, I can invite a guest, and I plan on doing that. I know another artist uh, in the next town over who is very good. In fact, he's the director of the gallery that were that sells my paintings and i want to bring him in as a guest and he can go on video and chat at the same time to talk to people i think that would be very interesting and he can give his insights and his opinions on on different things as far as painting goes and he does watercolor painting too so he can definitely uh, talk about watercolor painting to people that, that are interested in watercolor painting. I don't paint with watercolor, but um, he does. And he's also oil, an oil painter also. He doesn't really like a crunch, but he's more oil painter and watercolor, which is kind of strange. I would think that he'd still be fine with acrylic, but, but he also does... Um, Spray brush, spray spray brush painting. You know the uh, uh, this, this the spray gun type. As far as on big paintings, the skies and clouds and whatever, and um, I can't remember what the camera. I know what it is, but I just can't remember what it is right at the moment. But uh, but it's using a really tiny spray gun, um, and uh, hey, Pamela, you finally made it. Glad to see you. Yeah, I give you mod, Pamela. I guess you got my message then. How are you doing, Pamela? Well, make sure you click that bell so you get all the notifications. That's what happened with Minnie um, and a couple other people. They, they weren't getting the notifications because they didn't click the all on the, the bell by where the subscribe button is. We're expecting Brad tonight because uh, he did say he was going to come. So hopefully he will be. Yeah, well, those are good. I haven't, I've never tried those uh, 
many, but uh, I might have to sometime. My my son, who's an artist also, he loves to use pencil, color pencil, markers, um, those uh, gel pens, and uh, he's an incredible at drawing, and and uh, he has all kinds of cartoons and stuff too, and whatever, and. He's one that Disney World want Disney wanted to hire him to be an animator there, but when he was like 16, uh, they're waiting for him to graduate. But he got involved in a in a girl, and that ended that. Well, Pamela, anyone can paint. Anyone, you don't have to have talent to paint. That's a myth. And that's everybody else's myth, not the artists. Artists don't ever say that it's a talented thing. I mean, they, they may say it, but the thing is, it's not talent. It's like any job or anything you learn to do, you just learn how to do it. And you practice and you have patience and build your confidence. And you can paint. I've taught people that were up in their 80s, I've never picked up a paintbrush in their life and had them paint a painting. Um, of course, I was teaching them live um, right there, and, they've, and they did a great job. They did great, and they kept painting and just got better. And these are people that were in a nursing home, and uh, they did great. They had wished they had started to a long time ago. Yeah, thank you, Pamela. Pamela, I'm. Uh, I definitely try. I sh and I've had a lot of experience, and you know anyone can be good at it. A lot of people tell me it's this. It's uh, I have no talent. I can't draw a straight line. You really don't have to draw a straight line to paint. You really don't. I rarely draw. Uh, if I'm if I'm doing wet on wet, I don't draw at all. If now if I do traditional painting, yes, I may draw. But you can also uh, transfer. Yeah, you got that right, Minnie. Um, he was very excited about going there too. But then he met a girl. Next thing you know, there was a baby on the way. And then another one. And then another one. I don't know if you watched my video, Pam. Uh, there's one that I I told. I told people about the nursing home and stuff, and because uh, I used to teach a class in another couple few towns over. <coughs> excuse me, and uh, it was 95 percent of the people there were from nursing homes, and I did it because I wanted to get them out of the nursing home. Some could afford it, some couldn't. Sometimes I gifted lessons to a couple of them, but they loved it. They got out of the nursing home, gave them something to do that was creative, and they loved it. I did quite a few classes, um, and it was at another art gallery in Bell, Florida, and uh, that's where we did the lessons right there. And I think I would teach about six to eight people at one time, and they did a great they did great, fantastic. Yeah, my night's been okay so far. Just waiting for people to come in. And um, I waited on purpose to send out notices. I sent one notice out first via the community chat or the community post. Give everybody a heads up. And then I, I waited till 20 minutes or so, half an hour, yeah, half an hour before the chat tonight, then I want to head and put the official one out. 
I find that when I put them out too soon, people forget. So I figure it's better to wait and then tell people. I wish YouTube had a way that you could do multiple notices to people throughout the day or something. I live in Florida. So right now it's, um, well, chat started, it started at 1045. It's 1110 right now here in Florida. I'm not sure where you are, but it's 1110 here. At least according to my computer, it seems like my clocks and my phone don't agree with my computer. Oh, so you're up north then somewhere. Yeah, Recon is from up north too. He's because he's been freezing up there. Been real cold up there. In fact, I'm surprised he's not in yet. Recon's been here. Um Ken Silas, Florence, which is she's from Ireland. Um, who else? Hmm. Oh, it's snowing in New Mexico? <clears throat> I didn't think it snowed there much. So you must be down in the 30s then. And Minnie's in California. She's staying warm, too, or fairly warm. I know better than Minnie because I, I was in San Diego when I was in the service. So in the wintertime, it wasn't always warm. I remember getting pretty cold over there. Different temperature than, or different humidity than Florida. Oh, yeah, in the mountains, you would get snow. Higher elevation would do it. You did. Yeah, I was back there in 1973 and 74, I believe. And I was on the USS Vancouver, a station on 32nd, uh, 32nd Street Naval Station there. Pier 32, I think it was. Pier 2, maybe. I don't remember, it's been so long ago. But I actually had an apartment, even though I was in the Navy, when, I was, when we were in port, which was a good majority of the time, I had an apartment in El Cajon. I'm sure you know where that was, or that is, if you was in San Diego. So I did have an apartment there in El Cajon, El Cajon with uh, one of my buddies in the Navy. We split the rent, so... It was pretty cheap. It's kind of like a little two bedroom efficiency like wasn't very wasn't very big. Really. It was pretty it wasn't very big when I was there. It's probably grown up since then. That was a long, long time ago. Well over forty years ago. Forty five years ago, forty six years ago or more. Probably more than that. I did have an uncle that lived in San Bernardino. No, I haven't got it yet. In Florida, you got to be 65 or older. I'm not 65 yet. I know I don't. People say I look way younger than I'm my age, but I'll be 65 in May. So I can't get it until I'm 65. 
I'm kind of waiting to see if anybody see what all the side effects are going to be a little bit too. It kind of bothers me that the, the trials didn't last very long, but I'm glad they didn't have to wait too long, but hopefully it's it's no there's no serious complications with side effects. Yeah, alcohol was very affordable. It didn't cost much at all. Yeah, I don't know what the uh, criteria is in Florida yet, of how many weeks you have to wait for the next one. Well, that's good to know. I've talked to a few people that have gotten it, and they said they were fine. Um, they were they were also concerned about it. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, guys. That's what I need to do. I need to do a micro to do hit the thumbs up. Well, our problem here has been um, they've been giving it out to people that uh, in our county, other counties that don't have it or, or ran low or ran out have been coming to our county getting that. People in this county have been getting angry about it. And then we're getting a lot of people from out of state coming down and getting it. And the quantity that they have is very low. Very, very limited. So the Floridians aren't, they're losing those shots from people from other states coming down to get it. Which, I mean, we're all Americans, we're all citizens. I mean, really, it shouldn't matter except that it is, it is aggravating people because, of course, they want to see the older people get it first here. Um, but, you know, the arguments, I'm not sure it's a valid argument as long as people get it. But, you know, it's, and I understand, you know, certain things need to be a priority. Nursing homes, hospital workers, teachers, even teachers can't get it here yet unless they're 65 or older. And I think teachers should have it because some of the local schools, a lot of the teachers have got COVID. And they've got it from from kids coming into the school. And so I really do think the teachers especially should get it first. They should be in that first front line. Well, thank you, Minnie. Yeah, I've, I've, I went to a yard sale once and I might have told the story already, but there was a bunch of old church ladies there in their 60s and 70s, and they were chatting with me, and, and I mentioned that I had 15 grandchildren, and they all called me a liar at one time. There ain't no way you could be a grandfather. I literally had to show them my license because they didn't believe how old I was. It was funny. Yeah, I've been to Chula Vista before. Uh, Pacific Ocean, I think I've been there. Chula Vista, of course, Al Cajon. <clears throat> all over. I've been all over there uh, in that area. I can't remember any of the other little towns around San Diego now, but back then I didn't have a vehicle right off, so... I got a bus, a bus pass, which was good for a month. You get transfers and whatever. And so I went around by a bus. Then finally, I got a, I actually rented a motorcycle and a little 350 Honda somewhere in San Diego there. And I rented it for a full day. And I, just, I spent the whole day 
I don't know how much. I used several tanks of gas. I drove all around San Diego and everywhere. Well, I live close to Jacksonville. Well, I'm about 120 miles south of Jacksonville. I, I live near Gainesville, if you know where Gainesville is. That's the University of Florida. Gainesville is about, oh, 17 miles away from me. I have a cousin that lives up close to Jacksonville. He lives in uh, a little town called Glen St. Mary. It's not too far from McClinney. They're east of McClinney. I know, west of McClinney. West of McClinney. Oh, and Oceanside. I've been to Oceanside, too. San Diego was a very, very huge experience for me because I lived here in the country. Even when I was a kid, I lived in New Hampshire, but it was in the country. I mean, the town I lived in probably had a population of 800 people or 1,000 people, if that. And then we moved to Florida. And... We did live in Gainesville for a short time, which which had a good population, but very a very short amount of time. And when we moved over here where we live now, it's we were the first family in this whole area in this development. So there was very few neighbors even. And the school we went to was not very large at all. It's it's actually really large now, but it wasn't when I was in school. So Going to San Diego blew my mind, literally, because the sidewalks were as big as two-lane highways, and it just, I couldn't believe it. And plus, it was, it's open 24 hours a day. It just was mind-boggling. Of course, when I, when I landed, when I came into, I think it was Los Angeles we came into first on the plane, then I had a little cup plane and went to San Diego, I think. I'm not sure where I had to transfer from there. Um, it was really smoggy that day, and foggy and smoggy. And I was like, God, I had to live in this smog for all these years? And I'm like, but I got to San Diego. It was all fine, clear. So I was relieved. Yeah, San Diego is very expensive. I knew a few of the locals. Um, I knew somebody that lived on, it was called Laurel and Kettner. They had a house down that way somewhere. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Even even in the outer towns in uh, Pacific Beach and Oceanside and El Cajon, when I lived there, very rarely did I talk to anybody that was ever born there. They were mostly all implants or Navy, Arm, Navy Army Marines or whatever. They were military or related to somebody that was in the military. But I was, it was really amazing. Do you? Down right down by uh, Disney World, huh? And Universal. I've been there many times. I think the first time I went to Disney was uh, back around 1969. If you've been there, the roads are all tar, tar and, and there's some concrete areas, I guess, and whatever. But when I went there, it wasn't open for that long, and all the roads were dirt roads. Of course, Florida is really, really hot. Um, so, and it got windy, it'd be a little bit dusty and whatever, but 
I think I like the dirt roads a little bit better because I've been there many times since then, and the asphalt is is like an oven. It's so hot because Florida gets so hot in the summertime. That asphalt is just it reflects the heat. It's like you're in an oven. And now they finally put in sprinklers where you can walk through, like lightly get sprinkled with water to cool you down. Um, a lot of the music, amusement parks in Florida do the same thing now. They put them sprinklers out for people to cool down on them. You don't get drenched. They just lightly drizzle you with a little bit of cool water. Yes. Actually, I used to have three gators in my backyard. That's no kidding. They finally went away. Uh, during Hurricane Francis, we acquired several, a mother and some couple of babies. When the babies grew up, they kind of wandered off on their own, or they just disappeared. But the mother stayed, and she was about seven and a half feet long. I had to call off the fishing game to come and get her. In fact, I had to call them a number of times. After about three months, I'd call them, and I, of course, it's against the law to shoot gators, but I kind of insinuated that because this is a group home, um, y'all better come get get that gator because there are ways to get rid of them. And, uh, of course, the guy got a little upset about it, and uh, they showed up in about three days after that. But they actually have fish and game hires real poachers to get gators, they either relocate them or if, when they catch them, if they get hurt, they're allowed to keep so many of them and keep the leather and, you know, and sell the meat, whatever they want to do with it. But I've seen some big gators here, huge. Many years ago, before this place got real populated like it is now, we had a boat ramp, and I went down there one day because some people called and told me about them. I didn't believe them, but I went down, and there was two gators that were probably easily 10 feet long, and they probably weighed somewhere around 300 pounds at least, probably more, probably more than that, way more. I mean, they were just that big around. It was huge, and Fish and Game had to be called. A lot of people called Fish and Game. They came and got them really quick because uh, they were just too dangerous. In fact, they actually attacked a truck. I watched them attack a truck because we went down there. It was at nighttime, and they actually tried to get a hold of a truck. Did a little bit of damage to it, too. Luckily, he had some big old mud tires, and they, didn't, they did bite his tires, but they didn't puncture them. So I didn't stick around too long after I saw him. I was afraid they would attack my car. They were probably just defending themselves, most likely. But plus, they might have had babies, but I never, I never knew if they did or not. I have a nephew that was swimming with a few of his friends off the. Sw we live close to the. Swanee River, and uh, one of his friends actually got killed by a gator. They were swimming in the Swanee River, which is not a good place to swim, really. And next thing they know, he disappeared. Gator grabbed him and pulled him right down in the water. They finally found the body later that day. And I think that kid was only about 14, 13, 14 years old, young kid. Well, we get we get plenty of rain here sometimes, but but if you if you lived in Jacksonville, you know how Florida is. You can. It can be a clear blue sky and it'll be pouring rain. And you can just, you can literally walk and sometimes you can walk through the rain and it's like a curtain. You take two more steps and it's as dry as a bone. You turn around, you can actually see the rain coming down like a sheet of, like a sheet of glass, but it's all rain.
I'm actually more concerned about poisonous snakes than anything. Um, it's like when the Hurricane Francis, that's the one that brought the gators. Also, we, we live, up, it was a lake right close by here. It's not a big one, but it's a pretty good sized one. That was dried up. And um, for some reason, we have a pond out back. It was pretty deep. They all showed up at our pond. And we got, and our pond got infested with cottonmouth water moccasins. And we didn't know it right off, but my wife finally saw several snakes going across the water. When I looked, I thought, well, maybe at first it's just water snakes. They do have water snakes. So I went, finally I went down and I looked. Sure enough, it was water moccasins. And within a month's time, we we had to kill 38 water moccasins. And we actually had them coming up to our door, to the house and in the corner, um, which they would have killed some. They would have been a bitcher and killed you. They're very aggressive. So I've had to watch for those. I had to kill one this last year because my wife has one of those uh, koi fish ponds. And one was trying to get in it, but we had a net on the top of it, thank God. And the snake got caught in the net, its head did. My wife picked up a statue and it was coiled around the statue, but its head was down in the neck, or in the net rather, it was stuck. So I had to kill it. Luckily, she would have got bit if it wasn't stuck in the net. Of course, Florida's got a lot of poisonous snakes. We got rattlesnakes and moccasins, the cottonmouth, same thing basically, coral snakes. We got lots of them that are poisonous. And big old scorpions. It's not a real friendly place as far as nature's concerned. The gators, crocodiles. Crocodiles are pretty rare, but if you go down to Swanee into the Gulf, into the Gulf of Mexico, you will you will see some saltwater crocodiles there, and they're really big. Some of them guys are huge. Yeah, anacondas down in, the, in the, all them different pythons and the people throwing away their pet bow constrictors. The Everglades is infested with them. And in fact, Payne's Prairie over in Gainesville has a lot of them too. They've found huge snakes over there. There's huge. Hey, Recon, you did show up. How you doing? As you can see, Pamela showed up. Minnie's here. Well, I thought Brad was going to be here, but he hasn't showed up yet. I don't know if he's still watching TV or what. I'm glad you showed up anyway, Recon. Even if you can't stay, that's fine. That's my chat box. He does things for me automatically now. Yeah, I know how that is. He's doing okay, uh, Pamela. You know, he's doing good. It was the gambling thing that got him pretty much down on the gambling. He was liking the gambling too much. And so he had to get out of there. He had to get out of it. But I'm stopping in here. He's been in twice now. Um, so I'm sure he'll be back. He was supposed to be here tonight. In fact, he, already, he did say he was coming tonight, but I haven't seen him yet.
Yeah, I get up early too, Recon. I know how that is. I get up at uh, 6 o'clock. Yeah, he's in last night and the night before. Let's come in tonight. We'll see. He might be back in tonight. I'm surprised my daughter Jennifer didn't jump in tonight. She knew I was doing the channel tonight, but I guess she found had something else to do. Yeah, that's a long day. Don't forget to hit the like button, guys. I need all the help I can get. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I do. We do long. It was, my wife and I are on duty 24-7. We've been that way for 22 years now. In fact, we haven't had a 24-hour day off in about 10 years. Try that one for size. <laughs> I don't blame you, Minnie. I'm more worried about the snakes than the crocodiles or gators. Unless you're in the water, you know, if you're not in the water, you can usually see them okay. The snakes is what I worry about. There's no shortage of them in Florida. We even have the little pygmy rattlers. I've killed a number of them on our deck. That my little my youngest daughter tried to pick one up one day because she loves animals. I barely got to her in time to stop her from picking them up. Ah, I understand that. No problem, Pamela. No problem. Yeah, welding's, welding's a good job. When I was younger, I used to do a little bit of welding. I used to, I worked for a company in New Hampshire that uh, made, um, water um, water systems and stuff and I used to weld up the frames for them That's no problem. You can delete it. You're expecting more snow, Pamela? Wow. 
Well, I hate to tell you this, but today here in Florida, it was 82 degrees. It's supposed to be the same thing tomorrow. And the next day. I know, you're going to hate me for that one, but at least I'm going to stay warm. Excuse me. Yeah, I think everybody kind of agreed to that. That, uh, and I told him myself because I talked to him a number of times. Why don't you just just tell everybody you weren't going to do the gambling? That's all. Of course, YouTube's changed a lot. The algorithm, the algorithm has changed. Plus, they're putting videos on people's. Uh, channels that are not even monetized, which is really not fair to them, but they get away with it because it's them. And, um, but he's, he, sh he should have been fine if he had just uh, dropped the gambling. It didn't bother me at all because I was there to chat like you all are, just to talk and shoot the ball and whatever and talk about whatever. I didn't really care about the gambling at all. But I know there were some people that were really into it, but I wasn't. I've tried to notify as many people as I could that were on his channel to come over here. But I'm, there's a lot of them I don't have. The only one I found where a lot of people were where I could go to their own, their name and leave a message was when I did the uh, free painting giveaway, the free print giveaway. And that's how I contacted Pamela and um, a couple others. Yeah, they can be. I would rather, I would really would rather deal with a rattlesnake, really, than I would a moccasin. A rattlesnake, he's warning you when he's rattling that tail. If you leave him alone, if you walk away, he will go away. A moccasin, he's liable to chase you, because a moccasin is very, they can be very aggressive. Yeah, they do. And down here with the construction, these construction guys got to be really careful. Most of them, you know, they they know to wear good, solid boots, um, work boots that are higher up. They lace up higher, but the still doesn't save you. Well, many, every one of those are in Florida, every single one of them. <laughs> and more you forget the scorpions many I've seen I've seen um, areas that were infested with scorpions and I mean big ones we, I rolled a log over one day we had a pile of logs out and we, we cut a tree down and it sat there for a year or so. We was going to move them into a burn pile. When I rolled it over, there's a nest of scorpions. Must have been hundreds of them. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely something that we all go through, recon, especially when we're younger. We're busy working and we forget about spending time with the family sometimes. I did the same thing. I mean, I worked two jobs most of my life and uh, didn't spend enough time with the family. My kids still remind me of it. I mean, I did try to, you know, on the weekends and whatever and stuff, but... 
it's hard. To, it's a hard balancing act. Spending time with your family and your the kids and your wife or your spouse, and then you're still gonna have some. Basically, at least I always have had to have some alone time. Um, just time to myself. Everybody really has to have some time to themselves. Kind of rethink, think things through, and whatever, and you know. What's my alone time? A lot of times is when I'm painting, which is why I basically mostly paint at night. When it's quiet, everybody's in bed, I don't have to worry about nothing going on, no problems. And then I can paint and do it more relaxed. Because it does help to be relaxed when you're painting. You don't want to be all stressed out. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, uh, my son, my oldest son played football, and I think I only made a couple of his games because I worked. And if I wasn't working, I was too tired to go to the game. And he definitely wanted me to be there. Yeah, you're getting older too. It's, it's, it makes it harder to play with a two-year-old on their level. But now, my kids were better at it than me. My youngest son, he had quite a few kids, and he was really excellent about. He'd get right down on the floor with them and play with them all the time. You know? and especially the boys, because the boys were little boys. The little boys of his were kind of rough. They'd jump all over him and jump on him and grab his neck and try to choke him and they'd wrestle around on the floor and laugh and play and I mean he did he played with them all the time. Every chance he got he got right down on the floor with them. But he was in his thirties then or younger than that even. He was probably twenty five. That's different. When I get down on the floor now, it's a job just to get back up. Did you see roaches in your sleep, Pamela? I've been lucky on my motorcycles. I did get clipped once by a woman that tried to go around me from a stop from coming out of a store. She was in a hurry and tried to zip around me. And she kind of broadsided me, but I didn't get hurt. But uh, I've had a motorcycle all my life. I, I drive a, I have a Harley now. I'm a big old Harley. Big full dressed, um, limited edition, ultra. Electric glide. And it's heavy, it's a thousand pounds.
<laughs> oh, you'd probably still like it. Many, if you if you visit Florida and go to the bigger cities, you're probably going to be fine. You won't see you won't see the gators and the snakes usually and all that stuff. But you know, if you went to Disney World or Universal Studios, you you'll probably never see anything like that there. <laughs> yeah, well, kids kids can teach you things. My grandkids come up with stuff all the time, and I'm like, what? What's that? Then, of course, then they have their own little new lingo. Then they got to teach you these new words that they're saying to everybody and saying to each other that you have no clue what they even mean. Of course, they think it's hilarious. They think it's just funny as can be that we don't know what they're talking about. Well, you can always do like old Fonzie did when they do something good or something. And just go, hey! They probably know. They only know what it means, probably. But you can get back at them that way. I've never seen it. Or heard of uh, Fortnite. I have to look it up, I guess. It's all it takes, Recon, one time. Our first two children, my wife got pregnant while she was taking the pill. I guess she was the one out of the hundred. Somebody tried to come in a little while ago, but I didn't see who it was. Maybe it was Brad and he couldn't get in. See, you took birth control and, was, and then all of a sudden, bam, that's it. I'm protected was fine, <laughs> evidently. <laughs> it happens. I mean, some people have unprotected for a long, long time. Then all of a sudden, bang. <laughs> well, it showed we had five users here for a minute, but then it disappeared. So usually that's somebody trying to get in, and they just didn't get in for some reason. Or well, they changed their mind.
I was always afraid my wife would end up would have twins because they're running the family on my side and her side. I was scared to death that we'd have to would have twins. That my grandfather, his he was from a huge family of, I think about fifteen kids, and they actually had three sets of twins. Unbelievable. <laughs> if I yeah, I'll have to look it up. Well, my wife's in her 60s. And if she told me she was pregnant, I would definitely drop to the floor. I might not get back up because I might have a daggum coronary. You got to admit, Minnie, having the grandchildren is better than your kids because you can play with them, spoil them, have fun with them. When you get tired of them, you give them back. That's my wife and my wife and I are very much agreeable on that. Yeah, it's a little bit awkward, Pamela, having a, your son and a granddaughter that's uh, the same age. 
Because technically, he's the um, uncle. Great uncle, for that matter. No, he'd be the uncle, not great uncle. The uncle. Yeah, that's a big, big difference, 10 years apart. But it seems to be, it's not uncommon, really. I mean, I talk to people all the time. They've got one child that's eight or 10 years older than the other one. Well, thank you, Recon. I didn't see that comment there. I'm glad you'd like the channel. I hope we get a lot more people in here than just a few, four or five or whatever. But um, I'd like to, I don't mind having it. I like it about the size Brad's was, actually. 20, 30 people would be perfect, I think. Because then you can keep up with the chat and you can still talk to everybody. It's still more personal. And that would be fine with me. I've, I've been into a couple of live ones that had a hundred people and it was just utter chaos. I had, I didn't even, I didn't even want to stay in there. In fact, I didn't, I left pretty quickly. When the chat's rolling so fast, you, you have to stop it to read it. Then it's too many people. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would appreciate it, Pamela. Yeah, I need people that can, that will watch them. I need, like I was telling Minnie and 58C Brock, I need people to watch them the whole, all the way through because my, my analytics are horrible because people aren't watching them all the way through. I've, I've even broken them up to like sections. You know, if it's a four part, if it's too long, I put it into four parts. I did have one, one or two that are longer, but. Um, they're not watching the whole thing, so it just it really does hurt the channel when they don't. <laughs> well, I don't know. 67 is not really that old nowadays, Recon. Yeah, men can, can, they can manage it. I mean, they have little, they have little pills now that will help them, help them manage it too. Although my grandfather, when he was in his 80s, he said he wouldn't have had a problem with it. George Burns, he was 100 and he had a, oh, he married some girl that was like in her 30s or something. She was really young. Well, evidently, the army decided to declare mutiny on you, Recon.
I don't even want to think about it, Minnie. And, well, she's had her tubes cut and tied, so I don't think it's going to happen. But if it did, it's, I would drop to the floor. You can bet on that. She's liable. She might be. She might cut my throat if it if that happened. <laughs> I'll tell you a strange one. <clears throat> one of my wife's brothers was married to a woman. She was a, a heavier set woman. She went to the doctor, she kept having problems with her stomach, and they found that she had a tumor. They had x-rays and all that stuff. And they came to the day she had to go in the surgery to, to remove the, the tumor in her stomach. They got the tumor out, and behind the tumor tumor was a baby, a baby boy that was delivered. So they got the tumor out, and she got a kid at the same time. The doctors had no clue. They were so shocked when they found out. You would have thought it would have showed up on an x-ray. And when they, you know, checked the woman's heartbeat, you would have thought they would have heard it. Okay, good night, Recon. Have a good night. But we've been going for an hour and a half, so I think we'll just shut it down for the night and, um, Watch tomorrow. I'm not sure if we'll do a live stream tomorrow or not, but I'll uh, definitely send a notice out if we do. Pamela, thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Minnie, I appreciate you coming. So Y'all have a great night. Good night, Recon. All right, we'll go ahead and shut it down. Good night, Minnie. Good night, Pamela. Thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. I'll see you tomorrow night if we do another live stream. I'm not sure if I will yet or not, but if I do, watch for a notice. It'll be the same time if I do. So y'all have a good night. Peace out to all of you.
I don't know if you're not hearing me. Was... Minnie, Pamela, have a good night. We'll shut her down. Y'all hearing me? I'm that lag again. Just me, and uh, Pamela said it too. No, I had to say it a couple of times. I guess I was lagging bad. <laughs> 